what you can do is you can set the value then you can read the value back okay, and you can set the red value and the new value how to read the value from a text field obviously if the value is written inside the text field if I write say temp or anything inside it then it's in the application it is in the arrow properties whatever is in the application is in the arrow properties if I spy this username field if I spy the username field you will see that in, in the web edit these are all the properties the max length is this the name is email and all everything and the value property holds what is written inside the web edit at runtime if I change the text inside web edit the value of this the value property will also change so if I write over here username dot get arrow property value this will give me the value of the username you see this is the advantage of writing this line you don't have to write browser dot page dot web edit browser dot page dot web edit browser dot every time okay so you write username dot set hello username dot get arrow property value and you get the value in a variable say x fine and then you can write username dot set Okay, so in this example, we learned two, three things. That is, first of all, you can describe an object relating to your object, your actual object with which you want to work. And in case of a text field, you can retrieve the property value. The value property will hold the contents of the text field, and you can again write it if you want to append or whatever you want to do. Okay, now. Majority of the times, what we do is we declare a variable called page and just assign the page object to it instead of going to web edit and all. And inside the page, you can do anything page dot web edit, and I can give the name of the web edit that is email dot set hello. Write this like this that's how we can do it generally then page dot web edit and you can give the name of the second web edit or the what you can do is you can add the second password web edit into your object repository okay and you can write the second web edit you know it gives you options if you give a bracket it will give you the options which are coming from the object repository email or password what do you want I write I want the password okay dot set some password okay so if you run this from line number 8 so the page object uh, just a minute oh the page is already there. There's a, there's a class called page. You cannot declare a variable called page because there's an internal class called page. You should write my page or something like this. Okay. So when you run this on line number 10, it will work fine. It will set the username and password and all everything and it will, like, you'll be able to work with it. Okay. So similarly, if you have to click on a button, then my page, you add the button, then not web button. You give the properties of that button, whatever the property is not click, you will be able to click on that button. Okay. Right. So you can have objects which denote, a, you can have one single, you can create an object like this, which denotes a pre-built or an inbuilt object in your application. And you can just keep on working with it. Fine. So um, I'll save this as 
Now, yesterday we talked about repository. Okay, we talked about how the various features of repositories can be used. Today I dragged the objects from the repositories and I talked about the various inbuilt functions of QTP, the various functions of VB and all everything. Okay. Now these functions which are out here, set, click, these are QTP specific functions. Okay, out here in QTP you use two set of functions, which are one which are QTP specific, one which are VB script. For example, the message box. If I write message box hello, message box is a VB function. But print, if I write print hello, it is not a VB function. Print is a QTP function. Okay. You can actually do one thing. You can open a notepad. Okay. And in the notepad, you write message box learning VB. Just yeah. I'll draw it message box learning VB. Okay. If you double click on your WebEx screen, right, it will maximize to the optimum size. The the clarity will be good. Okay, the WebEx session which you are seeing, if you double click on it. Okay. So this is message box learning VB I have written. I'll save this file on my desktop in double quotes as my VBS file. Okay, and I save it on the desktop and when you go to the desktop it will be, oh sorry, just a minute. I save it as my VBS file dot VBS in double quotes. Okay, in double quotes I save this file as a dot VBS file. What will happen is you will see a file like this. If you double click on this file it will execute and it will print the same message box which comes from QTP. VB is a language which can be executed in Windows based machine. Okay, because Windows made VB, it's not for Linux or something. Right, and QTP also works on VB uh, and thus QTP is also supporting only Windows. Okay, but QTP has got its own set of commands which are not there in VB. For example, this set function, play, print and all. If I go to this file and I write over here print hello and I run this VBS file I will get learning VB first but after that I will get an error that there is a type mismatch print and all of it ok so make sure you don't later on we will be making dot VBS files and all as well ok but in that if you are running those VBS files with the windows, make sure you only write the VB scripting into it, okay, not the QTP specific functions. If you have to execute the file from windows, not from QTP, okay. VB script is a very, very powerful language. You can do anything with it. There is no limit to it, okay. There is absolutely no limit to it. Now, in uh, VB there are uh, features, functions through which you can control all the components of your windows and all. So if you look at the QTP help actually, then this is a very very cool feature of VB. Windows script host and all WSH and we will look at it as well. Okay. And it, it, it is basically that with VB script you can control everything. Okay. You can actually write a code, write a VB code in VBS file, right, which will open QTP. I mean to say you can write VB script in coding which can open QTP, right, which can load a test inside QTP as well without you opening the QTP. VB script will load the test inside QTP and run the test. Okay, That is what actually automation object model is. Right? And we will be studying that automation object model as well right? as we proceed with the course. Right? Now, <coughs> okay, uh, I didn't take a, oh, in 
that's what I want to tell you in these five minutes. The power of EV scripting. That is, if you actually go to Google, I, I was this this example over here, VB script to I was seeing this example a few days back. Yeah, you can actually write VB scripts which can actually go and fill out the forms and all, okay, without opening QTD. Okay, but the QTD guys they have uh, used the inbuilt features of VB and actually written the script which can open it up. Hold on, just a minute. Just a minute. Because it is no VB something. Anyways, I had a file with me. On executing that file, the, the VB script used to automatically open up Internet Explorer. It used to go to gmail.com, enter the username and password without the help of QTP. But QTP is a tool which regularizes, which regularizes the whole process. It makes the whole process easy. Fine. Now in VB, there is a command called create object. This is a very important command. Okay. Now, in Windows, there are inbuilt libraries. Right? For example, uh, it to handle the the what do you say the text files and simple files. There is a library called scripting dot file system object. Okay. When you create the object of this library, okay, this is library in Windows. Okay. This. With VB, you can create the object of this library and you can uh, then handle various uh, text files and all in VB. There is a library known as Excel.application. Okay. When you create the object of this, you can handle Excel applications with VB scripting. You can handle your Excel files and all without using QTP data table. Okay, you can do that. Fine. Uh, there, is, there is a library called adodb.connection, I guess. I know I'm forgetting the name. This library is used to connect to databases and all with the help of VB. So there are n number of inbuilt, inbuilt libraries in Windows. You By using the command create object and you give the name of the library over here, you in VB you can create the object of that particular library and you can access the contents of that library and you can read the data. Okay. For example, there is something known as uh, quick test dot application. Okay. If you create the object of quick test dot application library, then this thing can actually launch your QTP with VB script. What I mean to say is that in your VBS file, if you write set QTP application equals to create object to quick test or application, okay, and use the features of this QTP app object, then when you execute this VBS file, you can perform operations with QTP. Okay. So we will talk about that, we will talk about in detail about the advanced concepts of VB. What I talked about today was a very, very basic concept, okay. So there are around six files which I made today, okay. So fine then, what I'll do is, I'll end up for today, right. Tomorrow we'll move up further on and we'll see more concepts on this whole scenario, fine. And I think I'm going at a good pace.
right covering topics at a good pace and any 